Good afternoon, Professor Harris. State your name and uh, how you were able to uh, come to Charleston. Oh, it is a pleasure to talk about the school. Uh, I, I just have so enjoyed my experiences here. It's memory lane for me to, to think about some of the exciting things that has happened while I was here. I came to the school in 1946, which was right after World War II. Uh, my husband had been working in the Manhattan Project, building the atomic bomb at Columbia University. And uh, when the war was over, Union Carbide offered him a position here as a chemical engineer uh, at the plant in Charleston. And so I toddled along. And uh, that was a time when there were hordes of GIs coming out of the Army and looking for schooling under the GI Bill. And Morris Harvey, a small college that had moved from Barbersville, West Virginia, came to Charleston in 1935 and was really almost overwhelmed by the number of students who wanted to attend the college. And so uh, I started as a teacher with large classes sometimes with students who were very much older than I was, uh, but it was uh, really a, a wonderful experience and a great time. I, um, I had a very interesting experience in the very beginning. Uh, I taught political science classes, history and political science classes, and one of my classes was uh, municipal government. And because of the large number of students, we couldn't all have classes in the main building. So we would have classes around it within the city. And, My, and describe the campus that we're on now was not, there was not a building. In, well, there was one building here, I think it was a state police okay. uh, So uh, you, you, you taught your courses downtown Charleston out of post offices and kind of right. describe that. Well, my first, one of these classes I'm talking about was municipal government and was in Morris Memorial Church. I had almost 100 students filling the auditorium of the church. And uh, during <clears throat> the course, during the semester, we had discussed some of the problems in the, in the administration in Charleston itself because that was the, what we were talking about, su our subject matter of the, the course. One of the students came up after class and said, why don't you invite the mayor to come and talk about some of these things that we're discussing in class? Now, coming from New York City, I had gone to Hunter College and Columbia University as a political science student to get a, an invitation or even an appointment to see a uh, member of the municipal council of the city was almost impossible. So here I'm thinking, he wants me to ask the mayor uh, to come to our class and talk? So I did nothing about it. The next session of the class, uh, two days later, who walks in but Mayor Dawson? The student had asked him. And I was just overwhelmed by the wonders of teaching political science in a small city where the mayor, the members of the legislature, the governor, and eventually even the president of the United States and other federal officials were available. It was amazing. And I thought always what a wonderful location to study government because the students could have on hands-on a contact with these uh, important people. So from that time on, uh, I've had enormous contacts for my students with uh, important uh, people. Um, for example, well, let me give you two examples. Um, one time in teaching uh, government, uh, American national government, uh, I asked Ken Heckler 
if he would be interested in talking about the operation of the Federal Ledge Congress of the United States. Oh, he was a wonderful friend of the school. Not only did he come often, but he often would, took over classes to teach them. And I remember once, it was close to Christmas, and he was coming over to talk about some development in the government. He was an aide to presidents, and he talked about that also. And um, I had, fortunately, not 100 students in the class. I had about 25, 25 to 30. And he brought copies of his um, story of the capture of the bridge at Remagen mm -hmm. for every student. So he, he was just great. Another a person who was closely involved with the school was Robert Byrd. He was a student of mine in many of my political science classes and eventually, of course, becomes a uh, senator and a very uh, wonderful supporter of West Virginia government and uh, of our college also. And I remember I had him in many classes. One of the classes was uh, American history and it was a large class. I think there were almost a hundred students in that class. It was one of those uh, 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 individual co uh, buildings that was set up after the war and some of them were very large and they set them up on our campus to handle the large number of students that we had. Uh, so uh, in this class uh, uh, Robert Byrd was always extremely well prepared. If there was any question or anything, he would have, you know, some information that would be very relevant. The only problem was I could never call on him to answer anything or participate in the discussion until it was five to ten minutes before the end of the period. Otherwise, he would talk for the rest <laughs> of the session. Not that it was what, not wonderful, right. but it was uh, uh, kind of embarrassing not to, to get my information across to the rest of the students. And that was some, as I remember, that was some great, great Mario Palumbo, the former attorney general was in that class, as, men, as well as many others who became federal judges, members of the West Virginia legislature, etc. So all in all, the students in those early days were uh, really, really uh, interested, very uh, involved in government. And over the years, we had many interesting people come. For example, uh, Governor Wise taught a class at night in, on government. We had um, uh, many other, for example, um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Caperton uh, came to my class. Sharon Rockefeller took Russian history. Um, and, and all in all, there were a tremendous number of people uh, interested and involved in government and gave opportunities to many of our students. And over the years, our students became interns in government. For example, uh, every semester, and this still is true, every semester a student becomes an intern in what is called the Herndon uh, program and one in the Singleton program for the House. The Herndon is the Senate, the Singleton is the House. And a student for one week is assigned to be an aide to observe and to help a person, a legislator or a senator whom they are associated, given to uh, help, to uh, uh, be associated with. And uh, these, these students uh, have really benefited so much from this experience. Over the years, we've also set up uh, a wonderful program of internship for our public administration students. They go to Washington for a full semester and study a particular agency of the federal government. Uh, one or two has worked with a uh, congressperson studying the office of, uh, of a congressman uh, at, in Washington. And at the end of that 
experience, they report back and write a report on their experience, etc. And most of these reports and things we put in the library because they uh, reveal so much about how the students have uh, learned from their experiences. Internships are wonderful. Some of these interns, after graduation, have gone back to Washington, gotten jobs, and after a period of time have become managers of field offices of the agencies they were associated with. Um, and, and what in fact, uh, some of these students have, have done wonderful things in political life. For example, we had one student who became the um, county supervisor for Dade County, Florida. When the Democratic Convention met in Miami, he organized the Democratic Convention. He was the major organizer of that convention. Now, you don't have uh, <laughs> that kind of experiences very often. He later uh, became a member of the board of trustees of, the local, of a local university and a very, a very excellent and powerful businessman. So this political experience, these internships, were uh, a wonderful way for our students to uh, be alert to how government worked and how to be effective as a, a political person. And there's, there's nothing better than a hands-on experience in together with book learning, uh, see uh, how uh, the government really uh, can function and should function. Um, we find that um, another kind of practice that we have done in our classes in political science, not only internships, but we do a lot of simulations. By that, we have the students take a role in a particular project. And in, in working in that particular position or role in a project, they become very involved and begin to understand how, how some government works. For example, fairly recently, just a few years ago, I was teaching a course in international relations. And at the end of the course, we had a model session of the Security Council of the United Nations. And uh, Ed Rabel, who was here at the college, was going to be the chair of the Security Council. And Ed Rabel had this commanding voice, and the whole procedure was really, uh, looked, sounded very legitimate. Anyway, I had about uh, 15 or 16 students about the size of the Security Council. And each student represented a country. But we had to have a debate topic. And so I uh, came up with the idea, because I, I loved Russian history, and I taught Russian history on campus, and I was familiar with, with, the, with Russia and their actions in the, the United Nations. I posed the topic that Russia was cutting back on the sale of gas uh, energy for the Ukraine and Germany and France and the other European countries. And so that was the topic that we discussed. And, and we really had a great time, the students. We got very involved in that and it was fun. This was in the spring semester. That fall, guess what? Russia started to impose restrictions on the sale of gas. <laughs> and the students thought, boy, we were really right on top of that topic <laughs> and that situation. So simulations were also a uh, very common and a wonderful way for the uh, students to uh, learn. I've had some really fantastic experiences. Let me tell you about one that makes me, my, I, my, I just get goosebumps when I think about it. And one of our...